Yes. In this episode, we leave Fraser Island sooner than we anticipated and head for the Burnett River to shelter from high winds. We catch so many mackerel, we have to stop fishing. Our engine conks out miles from land. From our galley, Karen provides her top tips to manage trash. And the sky comes alive to announce better weather on the horizon. Six o'clock in the morning. I don't like early mornings. <laughs> Everyone who knows me knows that I need about five coffees before I'm awake. So not even one coffee I've had this morning and we're pulling up anchor. Looks like that the weather on the synoptus shows that we're going to get some southwesterlies and southwesterlies along the Fraser coast is not going to be good. And we're just gonna sit out the southwesterlies and wait for an opportunity to get out to the reefs. Two your fishing lines out, Rob. Double your chances. <laughs> one's got a big spoon lure, one's got a little spoon lure. Ah, oh, so... So it's a smorgasbord, the cater all needs. Okay, so a Spanish mackerel on the hand line. Yep. And a spotty on the rod. So if there's one, there's got to be more. See if we can catch a big one, huh? on pants off again. I don't want my pants to get dirty. What do we got Rob? Oh she's a big one. Nice one. Rob. So while I was below cleaning up after the last filleting because I got a bit of blood and guts all over me, Rob's been busy pulling in another one. Whoa! No problem! Love them! I don't know, I think we should stop. We're gonna run out of freezer over here. Yeah, well, I just love catching them fish. So does it go back in or not? No, 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 I think we've got enough. You only take what you need. And we've certainly got enough with this. This one and the one that we just filleted, that's good. Three's enough. Still motor sailing along as Karen slices and dices our uh, third mackerel for the morning. Lapa! <laughs> Seriously! This is one of the reasons we love our lifestyle. We've caught three fish in a matter of an hour and a half, and in that hour and a half, we've put 14 meals on our table. So, 14 meals, we'll stop fishing for the day because really, we don't need any more. Leave them for someone else. We're just cruising along nicely, both of us having a cup of coffee and some cake, and the engine has stopped on us. So Rob's down in the engine room, and we have a very sloppy sea with only five knots of wind behind us. So let's hope that it's just something simple because we're out in the middle of Harvey Bay. Lands quite away from us. We'll wait to see what the skipper has to tell us. Take one. <laughs> oh, I 
my day has gone from good to so bad. Oh no, just a pain. Just a pain, do you reckon? Well, we... Yeah, mate. What are we? We're 29 miles on our way across. We've got 23 miles to go. And the engine stopped for the first time since we left Manly Boat Harbour. <laughs> um, so we had a look, tried to re-bleed it, it didn't want to re-bleed. There was which, some crap in the... Um... There was a little bit of rubbish in the, um, in the rake bowl, uh, the fuel filter bowl. Not much, just a little. Um, so I figured one or two things. We've either blocked the filters or literally we ran out of fuel in the port tank. Uh, I tried switching to the starter tank and it didn't want to pick up the fuel at all. Uh, so that was a concern. Switch back to the port tank and what we've done is put uh, 40 litres of fuel from the jerry cans in that tank and guess what, we're underway. Motor sailing with fairly low revs, still getting along at 5.5, 5.8 knots. Uh, should have us into the Burnett River anchored up about 4 o'clock. We really don't have enough wind to reach the sail. No, we've got uh, three knots of apparent wind on the beam, which is just enough to keep the sails filled and might be giving us 0.1 of a knot, but it certainly steadies the boat because we've got a little bit of beam on swell going on. We've got the fuel dock in the Buckenberg anyway, weren't we? Because we were concerned about the, the usage of our fuel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the taco is not working properly. We felt we were getting along at normal revs, but to be honest, we've been getting along pretty well speed wise. So we were probably pushing higher RPMs than we uh, than we normally would. Yeah. Hence, we use more fuel than we normally would. Yeah. We normally get about four liters an hour out of our uh, 80 horsepower Ford Lehman. She's a 1970s style engine, no turbos. No, just mechanical fuel injection, nothing special. Nothing, uh, nothing fancy, but she tends to give us some, <laughs> some dramas of late. Well, <laughs> the engine's doing really well, Touchwood. It's just been the fuel to the engine. Um, so we'll just motor sail on now up to the Burnett River, we'll get in there, anchor up tonight, and go in the fuel block in the morning, fill our tanks, fill our uh, spare jerry cans, as Karen adjusts the uh, course, a couple of points to start. Just, just so that we don't run into land eventually uh, up there, we want to go around the headland and not through it. <laughs> yeah, good <point. laughs> So, it's a boat. And we all know Murphy's Law. Murphy lives on a boat. It never goes totally smoothly. Uh, you just overcome your little problems when you strike. like a big empty ocean out there but when you're on watch you really have to be on watch. You may notice Karen's not on watch at the moment. <laughs> Sitting back enjoying the iPad. Uh, but we are well over halfway across Harvey Bay on our way to uh, Burnett Heads and up into the Burnett River and we've been dodging well crab pots or whatever because there's been a number of floats on the surface attached to lines and we're on about 15 metres of water so they're not mucking around. Last thing we want is a rope like that wrapped around our crop. It's a grey old day so they don't stick out against the blue water as uh, they normally would. It really is a case of keeping the eyes peeled. Unfortunately it's been a rolling mess motor sailing Overcast, drizzling. <laughs> we can't have all blue no. skies and we are, boys waters, can we? We are on the boat, we are on the water, we have caught fish, this is actually, This is actually the reality though, isn't it? It's not always perfect sailing days no. with blue skies, turquoise waters, flat waters and good wind. No. 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 When we get those, we really enjoy it. And they're the ones we feature all over Facebook so everybody hates us. <laughs> yeah. But these ones, we tend to show something else. Yeah, we just show the fish we caught. <laughs> I can see Burnett up 
will be anchored in the river tonight. So it will be a nice, smooth, calm And look at this. Yeah. Jackets. The breeze is a little cool. Yeah, what's this? That's why we're going north to escape this. <sighs> Finally arriving into Port of Bundaberg. And these are the leads going through the main channel. And it's been nine and a half hours since we left Kingfisher Bay. And it has been one rolly sort of ride all the way. The wind that we were predicted didn't arrive. What did arrive was from the wrong direction. We caught some great fish. We had the fuel problem. It's been pretty eventful. We'll be pleased to get anchored up and have a beer. Okay, what I've done is I've connected our bicycle pump straight to a fuel line. It clamps on nicely there. I've been able to close off the valves that go down the fuel pump. So basically what I'm going to try and do is just blow air up through the intake back into our starboard tank. It's the one that just hasn't wanted to pick up fuel for whatever reason. So if there's a bit of blockage or something in the line, I'm hoping that the air will blow it back into the tank and then we'll be underway again. Better open the valve. Oh, oh, well, you oh can hear that's that a problem. Going. That's a very good thing. If you can blow air in there, we should be able to suck fuel back up. So, I'll just put everything back where it's supposed to be. We'll start him up and see how we go. Okay, let's uh, hit the starter and see what goes on. On our dream time, we hope to stay out on the water for as long as we can without coming into ports. So in our galley, it's very important that I manage our waste. So here are my top tips for trash. Wherever possible, we buy in bulk without any packaging at all. So I like to use shops that actually store their whole grains in buckets where I can fill my own containers. What have you found? Oh, I found a sauce. <laughs> That's the end of me, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I love this sauce. You know, and so now I'm just finding, popping up some bits and pieces that I know that we've used over the last four months. And um, yeah. And everything in paper bags? Everything in paper bags, no plastic on board. Absolutely love it. I'm a happy girl. <laughs> I buy fresh produce from markets and or from the growers themselves without using any packaging once again. We try and leave the dock without any packaging. This is packaging. Nothing but rubbish. So uh, rather than take it with us, Karen's for want a better term, decanted everything and got rid of the junk. Uh, so we'll leave this behind and we're just taking the food. Bottles we wash out and we restow where they were once kept, where we can then recycle them in the bins when we get to port. Biodegradable is actually really easy to dispose of for us. We actually use a bucket with a sealed lid. One, it keeps the flies away but this size actually gives us quite a lot of space. I chop it up very, very small, and when we're offshore, we dispose of it, rinse out the bucket, and the fish get a really good feed. Some trash is unavoidable, and we cut it up into small pieces, and we find that this condenses the rubbish down. You would be amazed how much you can fit into one tidy bin liner when it's been cut up small.
Karen does a great job of managing the rubbish on board, but when we get to port, it normally ends up my job to get rid of it. And this is a great thing that we found at IKEA. This bag, we can put uh, a stack of bags of rubbish in it. And when I want to go up to the bins, it doesn't matter how far they are, it's a backpack. Not only that, I'm not getting it all over my clothes. Perfect little tip. We've had three days of showery, overcast weather. And today in particular here at Burnett Heads, it has been the coldest day of the year. Got up to a maximum of, I think, 12 degrees centigrade. Uh, we've been hoping for some better weather to come. And here, late on Saturday, there's the promise of it. Sunset, and out to the west we can see clear skies. So uh, hopefully everything's gone tomorrow and on Monday we can head out. Lady Musgrave Island and Australia's Great Barrier Reef, here we come. How cool is that sunset right out of the galley portholes? Yeah, I can't get sick of cooking when you've got views like that. How magnificent. It is on fire tonight, that sky. It's been so wet. Can't believe that you'd get a sunset like that. Well, not only wet, but how cold's it been? Yeah, well, that's why we're down here looking through the galley window. I'm not venturing up there. going to warm us up. Ah, well, in the oven we have roast vegetables, traditional roast vegetables, potato, carrot, onions, pumpkin, and a lovely butterfly piece of lamb which has been marinated and has got black pepper as well as mustard seed. So that'll warm our bellies and the oven is going to warm, warm the boat. The boat. <laughs> I wish I could move the oven actually into our stern cabin because it's going to be cold tonight. In the next episode, we sail to the gorgeous coral atoll of Lady Musgrove Island where we receive an incredible welcome from a huge pod of playful dolphins. We come just metres from disaster when a whirlpool current almost smashes our dream home onto the reef. And from our galley, Karen shows how you can wow your sundowner guest with very simple to make pizza roses. We hope you can sail with us again then. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget that subscribe button. In this episode,